Hi, and welcome to the very first episode of the Truth Seekers podcast. A truth seeker is someone who wants to know the truth. They search for what's true and they won't rest until they find it. I am a truth seeker, and if you are too, then you come to the right place where we will search for truth each week in the stories of the Bible. I'm so glad you've joined me here today because we are going to be talking about one of my favorite Bible stories. But first, before we begin, let me ask you a question. Have you ever stopped to think about your name? The name that your parents gave to you when you were born is an important name. Your name has been given to you by God through your parents. It's the name that others identify you by. It has meaning and value. I've never met you, but I can imagine that you have many wonderful qualities that people think of when they hear your name. When others hear your name, do they think kind? courageous, thoughtful, giving? Today I want to talk to you about a man with a very special name. His name was King Jehoshaphat. Phew, that's quite a name, right? Poor Jehoshaphat. It must have been difficult growing up in school having to write that long name out on all of his papers. But don't feel too bad for Jehoshaphat because he grew up to be a king. And not just any king, but the king of Israel. What's so special about Israel, you ask? Israel was the nation that God had chosen to share his love and power to the rest of the world. Israel was God's chosen people to be an example to the other nations of what it looked like to love God, obey him, and worship him. Now King Jehoshaphat was a good king. He was devoted to the Lord with all his heart and led the people of Israel to worship the Lord. King Jehoshaphat came to be king during a very turbulent time in the kingdom. But King Jehoshaphat was a smart king and a good leader as we will see in the following story. One day as King Jehoshaphat was sitting on his throne, men from the kingdom ran into his chambers and came to the throne of the king as fast as they could, saying, King Jehoshaphat, we have heard word that a vast army is coming against you from the other side of the sea. They are on their way now. Well, King Jehoshaphat was alarmed, and I'm sure the men began to shout orders and demand that the king prepare for battle immediately. But do you know what the first thing was that he did? Can you guess? No, he didn't run to get his sword. No, he didn't run to get his army ready for battle. No, he didn't run away in fear. King Jehoshaphat resolved in his heart that he was going to ask God for help. And not only would he ask God for help, but he called all the people of the kingdom to come together and ask God for help with him. King Jehoshaphat and the people of his kingdom would pray together to God and seek him first. Do you know who else was there besides the men and women as he prayed? The children. All the men, women, and children came together to seek God in prayer with King Jehoshaphat. And as King Jehoshaphat stood in front of the people of Israel, he prayed this prayer. O Lord God of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. O oh, our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear us and save us. The people stood and waited in the presence of the Lord. Immediately the Lord answered the prayer of King Jehoshaphat. The Bible says, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, as he stood in the assembly among the people, he said, This is what the Lord says to you. Don't be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. The battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow you must go to the battle and march down against them, but stand your ground. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance of the Lord. 
Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Everyone fell down on their face in the presence of the Lord and worshipped Him because of His goodness and faithfulness to answering their prayer. They began to sing praises to God with a very loud voice. Did you notice that the Lord said they still had to go into battle? God told them to go out and face the enemies on the battlefield. I don't know about you, but there still might have been some fear in the heart of those people knowing they would have to walk out onto the battlefield and face their enemy. But God had promised them that He would fight for them. They only had to trust and believe. The next morning they woke early and set out to battle. Now if I were King Jehoshaphat, I would put my most skillful and trained fighters in the front of the line. I would find my strongest, most powerful men to lead the army into battle. But that's not exactly what King Jehoshaphat did. He did something completely unexpected. As the men were preparing and getting ready to march out to the battlefield, King Jehoshaphat began to walk through the people and choose men one by one to go stand at the front of the army line. Then King Jehoshaphat looked right square at the men at the front of the line and said, I want you to sing. Sing, you say? Yes, he said, sing. They were to sing songs unto the Lord. Do you have a favorite song that you like to sing? Maybe a song that tells of how good God is? King Jehoshaphat told those men to sing to the Lord at the top of their lungs and to praise Him for the splendor of His holiness. They were to sing, Give thanks to the Lord for His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for His love endures forever as they walked into the battle to face their enemies. So the Israelites began to march out together to the battlefield, and I'm sure it was a sight as the enemies were climbing up over the pass, ready to face their enemies, only to see the Israelites marching down to meet them with their men in front singing out to the Lord. What a sight that must have been to the enemy. Maybe the enemy even laughed, thinking they must be crazy. Who goes into battle singing? Israel began to get closer and closer to the enemy, and as the enemy was watching Israel get closer, God began to set traps for the enemy among them. As Israel moved closer, they might not have been sure what was going to happen, but they knew God had promised them that He would fight for them. But how? All of the sudden, as the enemy arose to charge against the Israelites, a strange thing happened. Instead of running straight to the Israelites to fight, they turned on themselves and began fighting each other. By the time the Israelites got and reached the enemy, they had completely defeated themselves. The Israelites didn't have to fight one single man. God had given them the victory, just like He promised. The people clapped and cheered and celebrated the victory and sang praises to God for His help and goodness and kindness to them. King Jehoshaphat's name would be remembered from that day forward, not because he defeated his enemies on his own, in his own strength, but because he trusted in God to defeat his enemies for him, because he sent his men out singing praises and honoring God first. King Jehoshaphat would be a man remembered for his faithfulness and trust in the Lord his God. Have you ever felt discouraged or afraid? Maybe you have faced a difficult situation like Jehoshaphat, and if you haven't yet, maybe you will one day. The story of King Jehoshaphat reminds us that God wants to fight our battles for us, and it teaches us to look to Him, to worship Him, to seek Him, and to depend on Him. It's hard sometimes because we can't see Him, but we can believe that He is there and goes before us because He did for King Jehoshaphat, and He will for you too. We can trust the name of the Lord. His name is good, trustworthy, and holy. There is one verse from this story that I want to remember 
It's the verse that says, Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Would you like to memorize that with me this week? Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. I love to think about God holding me when I am scared or unsure of the future. The next time you are scared or unsure or worried, remember the truth that we learned from this story, the truth that God will uphold us as we have faith in Him. The next time you are worried, begin to sing to the Lord just like King Jehoshaphat and his men did. As you worship Him, He will move on your behalf. He will take care of you. He loves you that much. If you'd like to read this story in your Bible, you can find it in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 20. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss next, week, next week's podcast as we learn about the story of creation in Genesis. Let me pray for you before we go. Dear Father, thank you so much for your love and faithfulness to us. Help us to trust you and have faith in you that you are good and you have good plans for our lives. This week, remind us to sing praises to you in all that we do so that your name might be glorified and so that we might see your victory in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for joining me this week, and I look forward to seeing you next week.